You ever get that feeling you ought to just leave things be? A wise person would listen to that feeling. I'm not very wise. I could hear them, the family I'd found in this village, calling for me just beyond the hedge, but something beyond myself wouldn't allow me to ignore the waystone. Alright, that's enough, send me back. But the waystone would not heed my request, and I realized it was missing something vital. Upon closer inspection, an inscription revealed itself. Great, a broken stone that told riddles! While I was no stranger to adventure, I had grown accustomed to the warmth of my oven and the smell of baked bread, so I hated the idea of being trapped away from home. Off I went in search of assistance, hoping the residents of this land would know how to fix this mess. The natural beauty of the landscape wasn't entirely lost on me, but what time was there for appreciation when I knew the banker was waiting for me back home, when I couldn't remember if I had closed the oven's fire? I found the residents of the village friendly, for the most part. I couldn't help but be curious about their moneyless society and accommodating nature towards strangers. The night was spent in a restless slumber, my spirit yearning for the comfort of my own bed. How I hadn't noticed until the morning, I can't really say, but the stone had taken more from me than my home. It appeared as though my very nature had been altered to that of a phantom. While I was still able to interact with my environment, this certainly complicated things. Seeing no other way about it, I gave running for it the old college try. This was a terrible decision. Just before I was sure to faint, I managed to tap into the hidden ability of the Phantom, which allowed me to stand in the sunlight without feeling like I was the one being baked. It also seemed to make me invisible to the naked eye. I wasted no time, unsure how long I could keep this power active, and raced to the apothecary shop. It also seemed the Phantom State allowed me to pass through solid material which made climbing the stairs unnecessarily difficult.
The apothecary had no answers about the stones, but he did give me a rather cryptic note he wasn't brave enough to deliver himself. The air of the mystic study was old, sitting heavy on the pallet, and all of the shelves were caked in dust. I searched for what felt like hours, the sun beating against my translucent skin through the window and making it hard to think. But just as I was about to give up, a book came flying out of the air. Something told me we'd find more answers in this old grove. Perhaps the apothecary would know how to find it. I appreciated his offer. A private space would certainly be nicer than a bunk in a tavern if I had to be here that long. But I certainly hoped I wouldn't have need of it. Even still, the space was very cozy. The journey to the meadow was not easy, but I thankfully arrived at night, which allowed me to search for the herbs the mystic's tea would require, and the second waystone. As I searched, I noticed a strange light over the hill. There were lanterns, ornate ones at that, lazily floating around an opening in the cherry trees. My heart sank as the reality of the mystic's plans and the certain heartbreak of the baker finally hit me. I became determined to help them in any way that I could. My search was fruitless all through the night, but in a race against the sunrise, I finally found it. I didn't think the entrance was meant to be buried. The dirt was softly packed together and some of the edges still had rough patches of grass. Perhaps there was some event that disturbed this area in some way. The hairs on the back of my neck raised, and I knew I was not the only presence in this cave. I called for the mystic to give me some sort of sign he was near. My suspicion confirmed, I allowed myself to be led through this waystone into a third. It brought me to a dark room where I found the ring he was planning to propose to the baker with. 
and another letter that had never reached her. It was time to have a conversation with the baker, one I didn't imagine she would welcome. After I showed her the letters I had found, she was more than willing to believe me and followed me back to the cherry grove. It seems the legend was true. The moment she touched the stone, his spirit was freed from it. But we weren't out of the woods yet. We were both still trapped as phantoms. He explained that while he couldn't leave, he was gifted enough with magic to affect the town and had been trying to get someone to realize what had happened for ages, though he had no idea how I ended up here. As fate would have it, the solution to our forms was hidden within the guide I had received from the apothecary. The flasks and questions required some combination of water, blistering melon, hibiscus, redstone dust, and lavender. Which meant foraging. And mining. Which meant acquiring tools. I figured the tavern keeper would be the best person to ask and dashed right back to the village. <laughs> Though not without cost, the tavern keeper's wife did offer to help, on the basis I could get her back her hat from a resident enchantress. This ultimately sent me to the market at the end of the row. Something told me there was more to the farmer v enchantress v tavern keeper story, but I chose to mind my business on that. When I went back to the meadow, I had very little luck finding the hibiscus. And when the sun rose, I used my phantom state to drop deep within the ground, deciding to use the daytime to find the gold and redstone dust. Being in the caves was dispiriting. They were so similar to the ones back home, it reminded me of the days before the bakery. But then it reminded me of my bakery. I wondered what my friends were up to back home, if they worried for me or had even noticed I was gone. 
if they thought I had abandoned them. You see, that's the problem with stone. It's so quiet, it leaves so much room to think. Once I was finished with my ore collection, I returned to the surface under cover of night. I first returned the Amethyst to the Enchantress. Then I went to ask the Apothecary's permission to use his cauldron. Neither were available, most likely sleeping like any sane person would have been. I had forgotten the watermelons, but luckily there was a small patch at the edge of the village. I also realized I'd forgotten to brew the apothecary any of the tea he'd requested. A quick stop at our temporary home and I had a warm cup ready to deliver. Though it probably wouldn't be so warm by the time he got up in the morning. The armor flask went smoothly enough, but the damaged flask needed lavender stems, and for that, I needed to find shears. Last in hand, I made my way back to the cherry cave where the lovers awaited. we were ourselves again. The mystic delivered to me the item I needed to get the waystone working again, and they went off to have a very special moment. prospect of returning home too much to bear, I paid no mind to the thought of goodbyes. If the stone was working, I, I could simply return whenever I wished. But I needed to see my own friends again, and I had an intense craving for my specialty glowberry tart. Not this again. <laughs> 